strong. And then we'll hit Road America for the final road course race of the season. Pocono, Indianapolis, and Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So that is uh, going to be 
uh, very fun uh, schedule here coming up throughout the next few weeks. And we have had some great racing so far, and we have seen different winners each in every race. Will that continue tonight? Will we have four winners in uh, four races? We will have to see. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at the uh, point standings as they enter tonight. Isaac Morris leads this thing by some 21 over Cohen Evans. Shane Coogan, third in points, and he's been pretty fast tonight. Matt Houston in the big loser last week from Barber. A.J. Musselman fell from first to fifth in the points. Uh, Gavin Sanders, Dakota DeMay, uh, Craig Forsyth, Kristen Nelson, Thomas Geisler, your top ten in the point standings after four rounds. All right, so let's go down here to the track and get ourselves all situated as we get ready for 150 laps of racing. Pretty much everybody has made laps on the track, and I mentioned uh, the young man being pretty quick this evening. Well, here's to prove it. Shane Coogan apparently is uh, going to win the pole right now. Let's see if this uh, continues on. We do have a couple cars still on track. Lewis Woodall and Kristen Nelson around, uh, as I mentioned, the old layout here of uh, the Phoenix Raceway from the heydays before they uh, decided to repave and redo the track get chat all set up for you guys here real quickly I didn't realize I didn't have it set up so my fault on that just want to be able to talk to the viewers tonight if they decide to they want to chat this evening and as always we got two races coming up this evening VOR here at Phoenix and then uh, back across the United States of Pocono Raceway for the USRC um, Grand National Series tonight. So Shane Coogan on the pole, which means uh, if this is official, just waiting on it to become official. We still got about four minutes left here in qualifying. We still have Kristen Nelson out there running laps. We got Nicholas Sudik out here on track in the 87 car. There you see the old dog leg right there and down into turn three and four. This is Again, the layout that started uh, with IndyCar racing back in the day, and then NASCAR came here in 1988. And in 2011, they made that swap uh, and uh, instituted that new dog leg that you see with the big old shortcut on it. As uh, Sudik qualifies. Looking for him here on the screen. Oh, he's up to third. There he is. I couldn't find him up on the grid. So only three cars have not qualified. Joel Harlman, Jim Herrick, and the car on track right now, Jose Miguel Flips Vigera in the 23 car, and he's up there against the wall already. That's not going to uh, help his lap any. Now tonight, I should say real quickly, um, we will not have the new cameras on track for uh, Phoenix, uh, presented by, uh, of course, Track Cam's. 22.com that is because they do not have a vintage phoenix setup however we will still have the onboard cameras tonight uh for uh the uh, race this evening so again a big shout out to our friends over at trackcams22.com you could uh, check out their website and check out all the great work that they do uh with all these uh, cameras you uh, saw last week at uh, barber motorsports park the the cool cameras they got working there and so much more um had a ton of fun working with uh, its van and uh, I think we got a great partnership lining up here for us a lot of compliments from viewers already about them and uh, so much more and that's what it's all about is, is allowing the viewers to enjoy and even the racers coming up and telling me hey Chris this is the closest thing to real life I've ever seen and uh, that that makes me feel good because that's what I want I want I want the drivers to feel that they are actually running or, or watching a race from the real track All right. So, of course, tonight they're looking for the Circle B Diecast Poll Award. We'll see who's going to get that here this evening. And I'm pretty sure we know who it's going to be because Shane Coogan's been the uh, fastest car, and right now he's got six 100s up, and I think everybody has qualified officially.
Don't mind me, I am here. I'm just looking for something really quickly. We're just about a minute or so away here from getting ready to grid, and we will award the Circle B Diecast Pole Award tonight. And we'll talk to our pole sitter here. Right, the cars are officially gridding. That's what I was looking for right there. I was trying to take care of something really quickly for you guys so we can uh, go on here with this race and taking a look at the starting lineup Shane Coogan on the pole and of course that is the Circle B Diecast poll award if you uh, type in that code right there Foxworth Auto Sports uh, you'll get free shipping orders of over $20 uh, for NASCAR and IndyCar Diecast uh, they ship in of course continental US and Canada uh, thanks to Circle B Diecast for the poll award Shane Coogan wins that let's uh, bring him down as we'll take you through the uh, starting lineup for the race if he's in Discord here. Let me uh, check because he might or might not be in Discord here. It looks like he is not, so uh, we won't talk to him. But uh, we'll get through the starting lineup, as I mentioned, for the race as uh, Coogan wins the pole alongside Thy Richard, uh, Richter, who is, uh, I believe, making his debut tonight in that uh, 33 car, the six one hundredths of a second to Floridian, going to start second. Nicholas Sudik, Julian Alt uh, Alton are going to start there in uh, P4. Craig Forsyth and last week's winner, Isaac Morris, in row number three. Samuel Lamprett and Tyler Coogan going to start in uh, seventh and eighth. Gavin Sanders in Indiana's Alex Van Desant going to start in ninth and tenth. Dakota DeMay and Thomas Geisler are going to have row number six. Row seven, Matt Houston, Gary Godso. Row number eight, Cohen Evans, Ben Benjamin Combs, uh, Diego uh, Pereno will start next to Ohio's James Watson. Uh, Christian Alejo, he'll start next to Anthony Concha there in the 20th position. Lewis Woodall, Kristen Nelson in row number 11. Jose Vigera, row 12, alongside Jim Herrick and Joe Harlman, the 25th and final starter on tonight's grid. So, again, it's going to be 150 laps. Around the one-mile oval, and there is Shane Coogan, again, the winner of tonight's Circle B Diecast Pole Award. Here's your code word again to get uh, the free shipping here on uh, NASCAR and IndyCar Diecast cars. All right, who is going to pull this one off? Old School Phoenix Racing on a Saturday night, kicking off a doubleheader of racing as Coogan is going to bring them to the green flag with Richter, Sudik, and Altena, and we're racing at Phoenix. Shane Coogan leading the first lap around this one-mile oval. And he's got a pretty good-sized lead already of 1.7 seconds over the new second-place man, Julian Alton, to the inside. Going to bring uh, Nicholas Sudik with him. This track very tough to pass on. I say that as Richter is going to dive back to the inside into one. Got to keep yourself out there in the clean air. Car coming down pit road already. It's Christian Alejo. 
What I, oh, and the 81's got a destroyed right front already. That's great for the 81. This lap of the race, he's got two seconds already on these guys. He is, uh, oh, he's on the move and gone, like already into uh, to, uh, Tucson or something like that. Great foresight here in the 27 car. We look back at him. There's Craig. Craig in the uh, there's that Paul Tracy look. I, I realized last week that's what that was. He kind of. Help me out with that, because I couldn't remember. Down the fifth gear here, turn three and four, down the front straight away. See the sun over there towards the east. Remember, this is morning time right now as we take a look at the weather. As you see, it is only 6.30 in the morning almost uh, in Phoenix. So this is an early morning race. You can uh, set that up here on iRacing, which is a really cool feature. Go back here to the 15th position, Lewis Woodall and Anthony Concha there to the outside. There goes Woodall down to the bottom. Got to be careful not to slide up. He's got Isaac Morris back there with him who started uh, back in, he was supposed to start second, I thought. But it has to work his way up here through the field. Or, I'm sorry, he started sixth, but restarted 16th. Not sure if he got UL'd or something, but I uh, just caught that, actually. And Isaac starting in the back of this race. Ooh, a little bit of contact there. Got to be careful. Sam Olympren out of shape up here to the top of the track. Now Thy Richter and there goes Geisler going to drive his way through. And Richter's off the pace. He's got something wrong here. And the 33 has got some issues or something. I don't see damage. I don't know if he did catch the wall or something. He's slowing up and coming to pit road. So issues for the uh, guy who started on the front row tonight. As Coogan leads. He's led all 12 laps so far this evening. 2.9 seconds over Julian Altena already in this race. Uh, about six tenths over Nicholas Sudik, who's got about a half second over Alex Van Der And then we got this battle here. here comes Gavin Sanders inside of Forsyth. So Gavin going to make a move inside the 10 car, up four spots already to the fifth position, right behind Alex Van Der Sant, who started in the 10th uh, uh, position, Alex did. Right on board with Gavin. Son, a little blinding actually right there. in the turn one and as you know with the old track layout that drop off a little different there in turn two Gavin's car looking pretty sporty right now matter of fact Gavin one of the fastest laps in that race that time by Jim Herrick falling back a little bit here. Going to get passed by the 13 to Lewis Woodall. Diego Pereno right there behind. Oh, and 
What a hard to get out of it. As they come up on the back bumper of the lap car of Richter, who uh, comes back on track some four laps down in this race. All struggling down there on that bottom side right now as Tyler Coogan comes to pit road. Did I see that right? Well, the 59's off the pace though. He's not on pit road. Or actually, I'm sorry, he is on pit road. Tires and fuel going on. I just saw him on the track still. And he is going off the track and taking the car behind the wall. Tyler Coogan, a promising race, the uh, brother of Shane. Unfortunately, going behind the wall early in this race. Come here to the third position. This battle is on three cars. Julian Alton, uh, Nicholas Sudik, Alex Van Sant. All right here. And matter of fact, let's add a fourth car in Gavin Sanders. And one car spinning on the outside wall. That's Anthony Concha. And he toes to pit road. Caution comes out for the first time. That uh, had to be very tough for people to see the sun glaring into smoke. That is uh, definitely not the way to go, but the first caution out here in the Western Waves 150. And here we go. Everybody on the lead lap coming to pit road. Four tires, fuel, leaders roll out. Coogan easily getting this battle off pit road. We had a couple of cars stay out. Thomas Geisler and Jim Herrick are going to stay out. Let's go back and see the replay of what happened. Concha comes off turn two and smacks the wall right in front of the leader. Oh, that was dangerous. Clips the grass, goes over the curving, and I think he's got broken suspension. And the car is just going to finally snap around and into the outside wall. All right, one more time here. Let's see what happens again. There you see him hit the wall and turn. That's Shane Coogan right there, I believe, who misses him. and hits that wall and there's second through six right there so caution comes out for the first time with Thomas Geisler now leading this race here 24 laps in the books again hopefully everybody's enjoyed their Saturday so far as uh, here in northeast Georgia, I think it's raining. I know there's a couple of cells over us, uh, some of the thunderstorms that are affecting the southeastern area of the United States, affecting us here. Pace car lights are off, single file restarts in the IndyCar series. Geisler and Jim Herrick going to play a little bit of strategy here. We'll have to see if 
how the tire fall off is for these cars. Gary Gonzo's on pit road. Unscheduled pit stop here for the three, or maybe he's topping off. One of the two could be happening here. There's the uh, race first Sunset Arctic Games Formula Indy Series, which, by the way, kicks their season off coming up Tuesday night. Congrats to them on kicking off their uh, first season. As Pace Car pulls in, Geisler going to lead him to the green flag with Coogan, or uh, Herrick and Coogan. Herrick has gone a little bit sleeping. Here comes Coogan to the inside. Oh, and Herrick's up in the wall. Altena goes by. And Alex Van de Sant trying to make the move now. And now they go out of the lap car. Christian Alejo and everybody almost runs him over. Altena goes by. Van de Sant, Herrick, Sunique, all these guys trying to get by him. Alejo right now running. Just doing some math in my head. Nine laps down. Here's your leader, Thomas Geisler, on the older tires. Right on board with Anderson as he tries to get underneath Julian. Turn three, just a little out of the throttle, letting it roll back. Upshift to fifth here, probably get to sixth gear by the end of the front straightaway. Running laps around here, 21 seconds. Oh, and Caution is out, second time. And looks like the 22 of Diego Pereno is wrecked. Also the seven of Samo Lamprey. And Samo's got a bunch of broken, or uh, Samo, that's Diego with a bunch of broken items. Now I can't confirm that Diego Pereno is not uh, a uh, pug. Let's see what the leaders do here. See if Thomas comes to pit road here or not. He dives off and comes in. Let's see what Alex does. He's coming with him. Oh, glove state pump fakes. I don't know if that's allowed. There's the cone there. Let's we'll keep an eye on that move. All right, let's go back and see the replay of what happened here with Samo and Diego Perino. Diego following the seven into the turn number one. He's out of the oh, and say he just runs him over. Oh, he right, straight runs him over. And that's the definition of running him over. Let's watch this again. Down the turn one, and uh, you're going to see then he'll get out of the gas. Diego just drives it in there, and then he's on top of him. We'll caution out for the second time here. Lap number 33 of this Western Waves 150. I believe we'll get one to green next time by where the pace car lights on. They are.
I saw something I was looking for, but I can't seem to... Oh, well, pace car lights are off. And we'll get one to go this time. Bye. Appreciate the viewers watching tonight up to nine. Wouldn't mind that number going up a little bit. Not that I'm greedy or anything, but hey, we'd love to see you guys help uh, with some more viewers, some more subscribers. I think we went over 360 today. And l let me share this number with you. Again, this is a humble brag. I'm truly humbled by this and truly just thankful for you guys to do this. Um, a channel that a year ago, if you'd have asked me, I would have done this and got this all set up and make it run like this. No, I would not have predicted that. But 362 subscribers now. And I have gotten 76 new subscribers in 28 days. In a month, we've hit over 75 subscribers, which there ain't no way I could have predicted that to happen. So thank you guys very much. All right, pace car pulls off. Shane Kogan's led every lap so far into 34. Julian Altina trying to have his best oval run of the season. Gavin Sanders with a good jump to the inside of Jim Herrick. the move and there's Forsyth ready to make a move behind him. Nicholas Sudik, Matt Houston back there also. You look to the back here, you see the pass going on. Forsyth getting by. Sudik and Houston side by side right there behind them. And you see Herrick getting out of the gas with the older tires. The thing about these Indy cars, they're just so technical. With how you run these things, you got to do a lot of shifting in these things and uh, just got to be very smooth with these cars. Uh, that is something, if you were watching me earlier this week, I ran a, uh, an official race at Milwaukee Mile. It was my first time ever on a track like this, a short oval. And, uh, yeah, it, w it wasn't the best run. Let's put it like that. I learned a lot. Had to go through a lot, but uh, it was definitely a lot of fun. Cohen Evans going to go past his teammate, Herrick. So Herrick's starting to free fall a little bit. Dakota DeMay on the inside there, and you got that very colorful number 55 of Benjamin Combs. I mean, that thing is, uh, that thing's got a bubblicious look to it. Third distance in as Shane Coogan again has led every single lap tonight of this Western Waves 150. Now Shane Coogan is, um, I'm not sure if he's the owner of Western Waves, one, uh, Western Waves, but I know he does some work with him. It was up the track. I missed that. Got yeah, Western Waves here. Very uh, music, photo, and video uh, media production and consulting group. If you're uh, looking to uh, kick up uh, your next project up a notch, Western Waves is a 360 media creation collaborative. Uh, specializing in top-level audio recording and productive services, mixing, mastering, and songwriting, consulting, and photo and uh, video, and so much more. Uh, you can uh, check out their uh, Twitter at oldtweeter.com slash Western Waves. I'm actually going to copy this and put this down in uh, the uh, info page on YouTube here. 
just so you guys can uh, check out this. Kane has led, again, every lap so far in this uh, 150 lapper, 150 miles. And Caution is out for the third time. We got a, uh, looks like a broken wing on track, so it looks like the caution over here in turn number two. And Matt Houston is involved in this. Oh my, and that right front's destroyed on that race first 66. We'll see what happened to Matt here in just a second. But first is a uh, teammate here, Shane Coogan, the race first 29 car. He is going to stay out. Van de Sant's going to stay out, and Julian Alton is going to be the first to pit road. Julian Craig Forsyth is in. Isaac Morris and Cohen Evans. Now, they have unlimited sets of tires in this series, so you don't have to worry about any kind of a tire rule. Three minutes at their pit stall. There you go. They roll out. So let's see what happens to the Indianapolis driver at Houston. Rival in here. Ricardo is inside here. Oh, and he gets pushed into the wall. have stopped on the track. Let's see it again. As that brings out the second caution. Who was that to his inside? Is that I it's Isaac Morris? He gets to run into Isaac. Oh, and bam, him and Isaac hit each other, or maybe some net code even. We'll have to check that out. Watch this at half speed. Let's go uh, real quickly here. Race, uh, rear chase will always show the answer here. So Isaac dives or in there in the turn one. He's going to make the move, but the thing is, when you ease into the corner like Matt does, it gives you to run on the high side. They do touch, and bam, into the wall goes Matt. Everybody does a fairly good job of missing. As we're just about a third distance into this Phoenix Raceway race, if uh, you're just joining us on the stream, no, you're not seeing things right now. We are running at the old Phoenix Raceway tonight, the 2008 Legacy Track as they call it here on iRacing. This is a uh, virtual uh, track that uh, was created back, obviously, years ago. I remember running this when I first got on iRacing. Matter of fact, this is the layout that I had my only NASCAR um, iRacing series win on. This layout right here, that's how long ago it was. Um, and a lucky win, by the way. That was some six years ago. Of course, now they have the new Phoenix layout on here, and. Uh, but I know this series is a big fan of this old layout. And there's always usually a legacy track or two on the schedule each and every season. And, of course, this season it turned out to be Phoenix. Here we go. Pace car going to pull back in. We'll go back to green as we hit the one-third distance mark. 100 laps to go next time by as Coogan has led all 49 of them. This guy right here, Joel Harlman, the uh, number 20. This guy started dead last on the field, 25th, and is up to 7th. Of course, as you know, and Gary Gonzo as well mentioned, no driver has ever finished or started last in the Indianapolis 500 and won the race. Joel's trying to do it here at Phoenix. Granted, eight less cars. Hey, 
He's got the full scent on his helmet. That's enough motivation right there. I should mention that the uh, Phoenix Raceway with this layout has two different bankings. Uh, turn one and two actually banked a little bit higher than turn three and four. It is more of a uh, uh, tighter corner at 11 degrees and then here the more sweeping nine degree corner here in turn three and four. Let's look at this battle for the fourth position here. There's Nicholas Sudik right behind him. Well, that's going to be right behind him. It looks like they've fallen off a little bit. Here's Benjamin Combs and then Thomas Geisler, who led some laps earlier. And I just thought about that. I've been St. Shane's leading every lap, and Thomas led some laps. Oopsies. I'm not perfect. Up the track goes to 55. That's going to give Geisler a good run down the back straightaway here through the dog leg. Inside into three. On the outside is Combs. These guys battle out. Joel Harlman has come back into the picture here. Gary Gonzo. How about my boy back here in the eighth position doing a great job? As I said, he loses the spot to Isaac. Moves over for him. Good spots. And little did we know there's a little yellow rubber ducky. Oh, contact! Right in front of Gary. Around goes the 55. No caution so far. Isaac Morris with heavy damage. And now he gets net coated into the wall. Still no caution. So we got two cars with heavy damage. Don't stop. Uh. Oh, he got lucky for that caution came out. But the champion Isaac Morris involved in that wreck. As Combs comes back to, uh, to uh, pit road, and Isaac Morris is still trying to get the pit road. Hopefully, oh, and he gets clobbered by somebody. Thy Richter just clobbers him. So let's see here. This is the wreck that ends up bringing the caution out here. As you see, Isaac's off the pace, up high, out of the way. And I don't know if the sun got in his eyes or something happened here. But uh, Richter's going to come in here and he just piles in them. We're gonna, let's go on board here. Well, let's actually let's back up a second here. Let's go back to the wreck that happens. I am dumb. I, I, I don't know what to say to that. I mean, it's, it's a bummer deal for everybody involved, but there's got to be a reason that happened. And, and yes, A.J. Musselman saying it over here in chat. Championship implications. Let's ride with Combs here. They got the slow car. He gets run over from behind. Isaac gets into him. 
I'm not sure that slow car was they were getting around. Now Isaac's way off the pace. And he guys is gonna have cars passing him. Oh, and he gets that's the net code contact with Combs that you saw live. So now his right front is completely broken pretty much. So he's just gonna try to tiptoe his way to pit road. And and when you have a situation like this, this is what you do. Get out of the groove and just run out of the way of everybody. I mean, yes, is his race likely over at this point? Probably. Uh, but you know what? The least you can do is get to pit road and see if they'll fix it. And let's jump back. I'm going to stop right here. Let's jump back to... Uh, where is he at? Richter in the 33. He just didn't see him. This goes back to something that, that me and, and others, uh, other drivers have talked about, not necessarily in this series, um, but I want to back up on this, and, and I'm not going criti to criticize Richter by, by saying this. At least I'm trying not to. Let's put it like that. But a lot of drivers you see in these series will drive off their nose, as they call it, and this is where basically you're looking out in front here, and that's all you're really focused on. But... You know, you get uh, some drivers like you see right here. Isaac Morris is slow way over there and the other side of the dog leg. So hopefully you're seeing that by now, which you have people can communicate that too. But, I mean, you had to have seen it by then. So if that didn't end the race, that did for Isaac. Caution out for the fifth, uh, fourth time in this race. I'm going to step away for a quick second uh, to grab something. I'll be right back. As the green flag comes back out, Shane Coogan leads this thing by half second over Alex Van de Sant. An unfortunate break for Isaac Morris there, who is uh, off the track right now, and I'm guessing his race is done. Alex Van de Sant second, Thomas Geisler up to third, Julian Alton a fourth. Now, a lot of the leaders have not been to pit road since lap 22, so there's some 40 laps on their tires playing the track position game. As Jim Herrick under attack, here comes Dakota DeMay. The Sunset Arctic Games car, but you know what I'm noticing here? A second groove coming into play. How about that? An outside line. That's going to make things even tougher to pass out here. As Dakota gets a little tight behind the turbulence, here comes Sanders to the inside. He'll make a pass. Now Gavin just pitted. He has the freshest tires out of all the leaders. And runs here in the uh, eighth position. Ooh, that was tight. Dakota trying to fight him here, and he'll clear him into Dog Lake. Here comes Sudik with him. He was six laps from halfway. A second, Alex Van de Sant. Look right there behind him. Thomas Geisler, and then he is under attack from Julian Altina. Thomas just ran his uh, fastest lap of the race about a lap ago. Yeah. 
Coogan up by seven tenths of a second right now over uh, Thomas Geisler and then Julian Alta, as I mentioned, Forsyth about three seconds back. You see Sudik making a pass on Dakota DeMay. That is for the uh, ninth position. Evan Sanders there running in the seventh position. And right in front of him is Cohen Evans. Two laps from the halfway point. Great racing out here right now in this one mile oval here in the Velocity Online IndyCar Series presented by Race First. As Harlman there uh, up 14 spots as I mentioned from 25th to the 11th position. Watson never mentioned his name all night here in that 39 car. As Forsyth is going to make a pass on Cohen Evans. He uses the uh, lap car there as a pick, the seven of uh, Samuel Lamprey. And look at this, going to have a fight for the lead potentially. So 78 laps in the book as Coogan leads. As you watch uh, two tenths of a second back is Alex Van Desant. He watched this battle for fifth. Julian shuts the door on Craig a little bit. Craig had to get out of the throttle, gonna kind of hurt his momentum. Dirty Air does play a role on this track, especially at this kind of speed on a track with this flat of bank, and you want to get all the downforce you can down on that nose. There's Jim Herrick. Let's watch this 56, the LMC geared car. Jim's last pit stop was lap 46. So he is running on about 35 lap tires right now. And you see him up here on this high groove, kind of running a, almost a diamond look to it. High group's a way to go around here, but it seems like on these worn out tires, they're moving up the track a little bit here. For the lead, here comes Alex Van de Sand as they come up on a lap car. And that was Diego Perino they went around. Alex doing the chasing. Chance to look tonight here from the helmet cam of Alex Van de Sand. What you're seeing right there in front, that is his uh, actual visor bo uh, bobbing up and down. We are inside the helmet of Alex Van de Sand. He's just trying to get.
get some clean air, doing a great job working this car. We got this battle going on here. Now the battle between teammates Gavin Sanders, who's gone by Julian Altina, comes up on the back of Samuel Lambrett and almost becomes a pick. Forsyth almost got a run with Cohen Evans right there behind him. Racing starting to pick up here at Phoenix Raceway. Again, this is the 2008 edition. If you're watching, you're like, wait a minute, this isn't Phoenix. This is the way it looked before the repave uh, 10 years ago. Forsyth starting to look underneath Alton for the position. They come up on a couple more lap cars. We got this battle. We got a battle for the lead going on. We got this battle back here for 11th with Dakota DeMay and uh, Joel Harlman. You just look at the different groups these guys are running too, which is very interesting for this track. Oh, and Harlman gets in the back of Dakota. And he is destroyed. Caution is out for the fifth time. Uh, looks like Joel just drove it in there too deep and gets into the back of him. Go pit stops. Everybody is in at one time here. Obviously, easily going to make it to the finish, but now it comes down to the fresh tires and stuff. Race off pit road, Alex Van de Sand. Wow. 8.23 second stop gets the lead from Shane Coogan. Let's go back and see the accident here. There's Dakota, Joe Harlman right there behind him. So Dakota's running the high side. That's what most of these cars have been doing. Just kind of separating the grooves out here, and they come down the front straightaway. Dakota's going to get out of the gas, and Joel just gets into him. Just drives it in there too deep. Dakota tries to lock her down, but that thing just snaps around and clobbers the wall. Watch one more time. Joel was working the draft. And Dakota does everything to try to save it here. Oh, and it had already broken the wing off at that point. It was pretty much done at that point. That's how hard he got hit. Broke the rear wing off. All right. So fifth caution here at lap 92. Tough break there. So Alex Van Der Sant leaving his first laps of the evening. Looking to bring the uh, Tom Hoover's championship chili mix. Happy Trails chili mix, that is, to uh, Victory Lane tonight. You can, in case you haven't known, you can always go get that on Amazon. I know it's not necessarily chili kind of weather, but well, at least where I'm at.
Pace cars in and Van Dessen gonna lead them back to the green. 57 laps to go. You see teammates in turn two here going to war. Julian Alton on Gavin Sanders. Here comes Craig Forsyth. There is no holding back here. Got to go and get what you can get around this one mile oval. Like doing everything he can to try to get that run. There he goes to the inside of Ju uh, to uh, San Sanders, and he has to get out of it. A little bit of turbulent air there, and kind of pushed up. If you want to give a shout out to Track Cams for Gourmets, you can uh, check them out online at trackcams22.com. Of course, they focus on ovals, dirt. And uh, road course cameras, they got virtual reality and fan cameras also at certain tracks. Uh, you go to trackcams22.com and check them out right there on the YouTube page and uh, see the link right there to their website. Uh, tonight, uh, we got cameras for the cars. Uh, they don't have an old school Phoenix camera set. As I hear one, there's a thunder outside my house. And to the inside, that's Sudik on Forsyth. And wow, he chops the nose. Oh, Craig got loose right there. Had to go catch her. So Van de Sam with about a half second lead over Shane Coogan, who's got nine tenths over Geisler. I've actually never watched a IndyCar race on the virtual Phoenix here on iRacing. I've seen a real race at the uh, old Phoenix layout and stuff, but nothing. So it's just kind of a reminder watching this. Like, oh, yeah, I remember when this happened. I remember when this kind of stuff could happen. It's just a very tricky track because when you got cars this fast, this is a small, this is a short track for IndyCars. Put it like that. I mean, when you look at short tracks and stock cars, you see half mile tracks like Bristol Martinsville uh, even some of the short track short tracks like uh, you know Langley Lanier New Smyrna stuff like that this is a short track for an Indy car so when you look at Richmond and you look at Iowa you look at Phoenix tracks like that these are short tracks that's why you see them out here running laps of 20 seconds 21 seconds around here and they're hauling the mail around this track Julian Alton to trying to hold off Gavin Sanders still by two tenths. Sudik about four tenths back in the sixth position as Van Sant still leads by about 1.5 now. So he's starting to pull away from Coogan. And Joe Harlman on scheduled pit stop for the 20. That's weird looking. Watch Cohen Evans drive to the bottom. Oh, caution's out for some reason. And that might be the reason why that he drove to the bottom like that. Matt Houston is wrecked over here on the front straightaway. I was wondering why uh, Cohen made a move like that. Six caution here, lap number 106.
right, so do you come to pit road for tires here? Uh, everybody's pulling fakes right now. Uh, Gary Godso says yes. So Godso going to take tires. Let's go back and look at what happened here to bring out the sixth caution with Matt uh, Matt uh, Houston. Gets passed by Altena. Here comes Gear, uh, Sanders to him. It's okay right now. Oh, and... Hits the outside wall. And then hits the inside wall. And that's where Cohen's going to make the abrasive move here. Right there. So Matt Houston goes around over here and... Oh, and somebody clipped him there. Is that Samo? So caution out for the sixth time because of that wreck. A little bit of attrition here tonight. We have now 11 cars on the lead lap. We have roughly seven, eight cars behind the wall now, damaged. So here we go, pace car gonna pull off. We'll go back racing here, 38 laps to go. Eisler, Altena, and Gavin Sanders, your top five. Pardon a little breaks you might be hearing at times, me on the microphone. I'm actually just looking out the window and stuff, making sure everything's okay, rain-wise and stuff. I have a... I mean, they, they said there were chances for some strong storms here where I'm at, but uh, I um, don't have my weather radio. It's over in the uh, other room, so I might not be hearing it. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on things outside. So if you hear little breaks of uh, audio for me, it's just me just kind of taking a glance outside, make sure everything's okay. So. Fortunately, or uh, I should say fortunately for me, but unfortunately for those over in Alabama and stuff, getting these... Uh, storms. I mean, we're near them, but not. As Gavin Sanders ahead of Julian Altena here now. That pass happened just a second ago. Subi, Craig Forsyth, Cohen Evans.
And Sadiq gets a little uh, oversteer there off the corner, had to catch it. And now Forsythe's going to try this high side. He's to come up on a lap car of Joe Harlman. That makes Sadiq go up the track. And now Cohen Evans coming up on him. James Watson under attack. Gary Godso trying to get another top 10 here to the inside. And trouble for Isaac Van de Sant. Up in the wall. Alex Van de Sant going for the win. Vandesan's going to come to pit road, but unfortunately hand the lead over to Shane Coogan. Who has led the most laps and now issues. See if I can find what happened to Alex really quickly here. Give me one second and I'll get it. It's gonna happen right here. Alex is up in the outside wall right here. Let's back up a little more. Oh, yeah, the seven just in the middle of the track. And Isaac runs him over. I mean, this is where communication. Seven goes in. And then all of a sudden just stops right there at the top of the track. And Alex clobbers him. Just miscommunication there. I don't know if Samo was going to go to the bottom and saw Alex and then stayed up top and just became unpredictable or what? Tough break there. Alex was on his way to a win potentially tonight. And now Shane Coogan leads Gavin Sanders, who's down up to second. Tommy Geisler, third. Julian Altano, the fourth. And Cohen Evans, your top five. Somebody just grenaded an engine. I just heard something explode. And I think it's Alex, unfortunately. Yeah, Alex is off the pace. I think it's an engine grenaded. So now officially Alex Van de Sant will be out of this race. Yeah, uh, Sam has been involved in a couple incidents tonight. Um, and uh, so he's off the pace. And I think it's one of those deals where it's just a tough spot. I mean, you could say, I mean, 
Obviously, yes, the lap car needs to be out of the way of the leader, especially when you're many laps down, but there's got to be communication there, too. If it's Samo saying, hey, I'm going to go here, or if it's Alex saying, I'm going here. But, you know, in fairness, Alex is coming so fast, Samo should have just stayed up to the top. But uh, it's just a stinky deal, I guess we'll call it. Julian Altina under attack here. Cohen Evans and Nicholas Sudik here. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. Here in the front, Gavin Sanders has gone to the lead. Let's go back and see the pass with 21 laps to go. Gavin Sanders has come to the lead, and now caution is out for Cohen Evans. We'll go to that here in a second. There's the pass for the lead. So just like that, two of the LMC cars with issues. So there's the pass. And then there's Cohen. What happens to Cohen? And 37, unfortunately, going to be out after that. Let's watch it one more time. At uh, Let's go full speed now, if it lets me. There we go. And then turn three and four. Tries to get the outside of Julian here. Oh. Let's go rear chase. Was that net code? Best way to see. Oh, big net code. Big net code. And clobber in the wall is Cohen. But we do have some interesting strategies coming into play here. As the leader, some of them have come to pit road. Gavin Sanders has stayed out. But look who's second. Teammate Gary Godso. Jim Herrick is going to be third. And then Shane Coogan is going to be fourth now on new tires. Gary Gonzo pitted about 15 laps ago, so his tires are actually newer than the leader also. Now, gonzo has got a history of winning on short tracks or, uh, or um, short ovals in the Indy car. And, uh, Gateway comes to mind. come to the green flag this time by as Gavin Sanders looking to come get a victory this evening
Now Gavin Sanders looking for his first career win. He did win a preseason race uh, earlier this season at Road America before the season started. So Gavin has been to victory lane, just not officially. Gary Godsell, of course, the winner from Gateway. Uh, I believe it was two seasons ago. And one car off the pace in turn one. It's the 64 of Anthony Concha has backed it in as we stay green. Can Gary use the tires to go get Gavin? Holy geez. Oh, he almost got the wall. Shane Coogan up the third. He has been the fastest car all night, arguably. As Coogan comes up to the back of Godso. Coogan inside and Gary chops him. And look at this, another VOR car right behind him of Julian Altena as these guys try to sweep the top three. Coogan gonna cross him over. Now the irony of this whole thing is, I believe Coogan drives for uh, Gary Conzo's team over in the uh, TI series, and here he is now. And look at Julian run the high side and get past both of them. And bring Sadiq with him. One point two seconds. Sanders over Altena now, as Coogan's going to go by Gary. Again next week, Texas Motor Speedway for the VOR cars. We'll have that race for you at 7.30 next Saturday night. And caution is out. Jim Herrick. Who is having a fantastic run tonight has crashed it. And caution is out for seven laps to go. Oh, Jimmis comes out turn four and clobbers the wall. Just gets tight off the corner and pushes up and hits the wall now. And that is gonna make a very interesting situation now. Under 10 laps to go. This means that all the lap down cars will start back and the lead lap cars will uh, be able to go for the win here, I believe. We should get about a three lap restart here.
So VOR locking up the top five right now with three cars. Gavin Sanders, Julian Altida, and uh, Gary Godso there in fifth. You got Sadiq and Coogan third and fourth. Thomas Geisler, James Watson with a great run in seventh. And Craig Forsyth there in the eighth position. So should see one to go this time by. So we're down to nine cars. I believe so we got a couple cars still running, but we got eight on the lead lap. Vigera in ninth. And then uh, Dakota Demed still on track. Diego Pereno, Christian Alejo. Uh, Anthony Concha is still out there fighting the rest of the cars off the track. So we'll have a three-lap restart here, single file. And there are no green-white checkers in IndyCar racing, so you will uh, see a straight-up finish here. If the caution comes out, it's over. Pace car pulls off. Sanders on it. Here we go. Teammates going to battle it out for the lead. Here comes Julian to the outside. He's got the run. And Julian Altano with a power move to the outside to the lead. And now Sadiq makes a move to the outside the second final lap in Phoenix. All of a sudden, Gavin Sanders has fallen off the pace with older tires. And now Alton gets tight. Here comes Sadiq for the win. He's there. Off the corner, side by side. Alton wins it. One hundredths of a second. Julian Alta wins the Western Waves 150 and gets his first win of the season in a much needed win after a rough start. Continues to rack up his uh, career leading wins of seven now in the series. Let's go back and watch that last lap. So yeah, I don't, Julian must have gotten tight off turn two here because Sudik has a super run. Yeah, matter of fact, hey, he gets too high. And it allows Nick to get the run. Well, they net code each other there. Thankfully, it didn't wreck. Great job, great race. Uh, 
run, but final results for the race. There is Julian Alton who gets the win by one one hundredth of a second over uh, Nicholas Sadiq. Gavin Sanders gets third. Uh, Shane Coogan, Thomas Geisler, your top five. James Watson, James Watson, Craig Forsyth, Gary Godsell falls back to eighth. Uh, Jim Eric, ninth. Jose Vigera, tenth. Uh, Dakota DeMay, uh, 11th. Diego Pereno, 12th. Christian Alejo, 13th. Alex Van de Sand, 14th. Cohen Evans, 15th. Uh, Matt Houston, Anthony Concha, Samuel Lampert, 18th. And took a look, uh, look at the rest of the finishing order. Joel Harleman, uh, Benjamin Combs, Isaac Morris, finishing 21st. Lewis Woodall, 22nd. Kristen Nelson, 23rd. Uh, Ty Richter, uh, Richter, 24th. And Ty, uh, Tyler Coogan, finishing in the 20th. Fifth position. What a race that was. Good way to start off a Saturday night. Of course, coming up next, we'll have the uh, USRC race from Pocono. As Julian Alton gets his seventh series win in his first this season he now sets his first win as a 17 year old oh by the way too should mention from the random statness of me uh i guess i better come into the channel i didn't even discord the whole entire race uh where's my channel out here they're all in the lobby all right i'm up here All right, so let's get uh, Julian up here with me here. Of course, Julian uh, celebrating a win, his first one of the season. Julian, congratulations. Let's talk about that last lap because uh, it almost slipped out of your hands. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I can't believe I won the race. <laughs> I was on the disco with the boys, and uh, I was literally screaming in happiness, but that final lap was, was a nail-biter, really. On the last restart, I was um, trying to work with Gavin a little bit, like I knew that he was on uh, all the tires. And um, we were just trying to get the one two secured for the team. And um, on the race, I got the good jump on the outside line and uh, managed to pull it around the outside of three or four later on in the lap. And uh, managed to hold off Sadiq at the end. There was a drag race. Uh, so that was really good. And uh, I believe for Phoenix, this is one of the shortest uh, offers as well that uh, they run an IndyCar normally, apart from, of course, Iowa and Richmond. But to have a finish this close, mm -hmm. it. Uh, if I if I can say so myself in my own league, this really shows the quality of the grid in his league. So, you know, <laughs> extremely happy with the win, and uh, already can't wait for next week, uh, two weeks from yeah. Uh, Texas. Yeah, Texas Motor Speedway going to be a, a fun race. You mentioned two weeks. I, I slipped up there and I said one week, but two weeks. Uh, but uh, no, still, uh, I mean, the finish there. You actually, you and him actually touched each other. You're going to see when you watch the replay. Your left front tire is inside his right rear tire, so somehow the net code didn't connect each other, or the other way around. Yeah, I was really happy about that. I was um, going through the final turn, and I left him enough space for the outside originally, but then I hit the, uh, a bump on the inside of the on the inside roof, which I kind of forgot about to be honest. And it, the car picked up a little bit of understeer, but it wasn't too bad, fortunately. Um, but yeah, it was a great finish, and I'm super proud to finally get the win uh, again. It's been my, this is my first win, I believe, since. Um, Road America season two. Ah, so you break the slump there, and you uh, also get your first win as a 17-year-old. You get your first win. Uh, you get your seventh career win, which continues the uh, career lead there. Uh, so great job uh, on your end there, and send shout-outs to whoever you like to, bud. Yeah, I want to give a shout-out to all of my teammates, of course. Uh, Oscar, who didn't race today. Gaffin, who got uh, P3. Gary, I believe, finished P5. Is that correct? Uh, he finished eighth. Oh, I, he was P5 with a couple of laps to go then. Uh, I was so excited in the battle that I forgot about everything going on. But yeah, Gary, <laughs> uh, finishing eighth then. Uh, he is one of my teammates also. And uh, of course, uh, kind of the B team of ours, 5150V Performance Motorsports um, with uh, with Robert. Uh, Gary is the team boss of them. Uh, Tyler Coogan, Isaac, and uh, Antonio Estrada, they're uh, all on the, on the team as well uh, in the Discord. So we all work together to prepare for these races, those guys. Uh, are awesome and um was a shame that we couldn't see uh, antonio and uh, um 
can't remember anymore, but we had two drivers missing the race. So <laughs> that was a bit unfortunate, but, uh, you know, I'm super proud of, uh, of all the guys and I uh, want to thank Matt for sponsoring the league with Raceverse. I uh, want to thank Shane for sponsoring this race with Western Race uh, Media, so check those guys out as well as Raceverse on uh, racefirst.com. And I um, want to thank you for streaming and um, all the sponsors on the car, most of them are from uh, from Gavin's Real Racing, but uh, thanks to those guys as well for uh, also sort of supporting us on the virtual scene, so that's nice too. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys. Well, great job tonight, Julie. Congratulations on the uh, win, young man. Thank you very much. I'm going to have a beer now. <laughs> wait, wait a minute here. You're not here. You're still too young to do that. Don't do that. Uh, well, well, I'm not, I'm not too – I'm not – Young enough. Too young. <laughs> <laughs> I can celebrate with a beer. Atta boy. Yeah, great job tonight, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely. Is uh, we'll get uh, Nicholas up here uh, to join us this uh, for his uh, second place uh, finish tonight, Nick. It came so close there, Julian. Got tight. You tried to make a move uh, to the outside. Uh, what was the difference there? Uh the difference was just. Uh, pace i uh he threw a nice defensive move into three and four so i had to hesitate take a little bit higher line mm -hmm. and then the drag race off of four like if you watch at least on my client side the replay we actually net code into each other like yep. my left front is in his front yeah. rear mm -hmm. um so i'm just glad that it corrected itself in time rather than taking us out though because that was that was a heck of a finish and it it, it just honestly feels great to have a uh have a have a, res a good result here finally i mean i know i had fourth earlier but a good podium it feels really good so yeah and you you kind of i don't want to say you hung back a little bit but you ran fourth to eighth most of the race and uh what was the difference there was it the newer tires that just helped you get that track position and give you that shot yeah the um so the way i was planning on was initially i i, I pitted and fell back to like i think like 10th or 11th mm -hmm. and i was just gonna play the long game and hope that uh, everybody's tires i because I, I expected a caution to fall within the last like 50 laps or so right and at that point it's about like 40 to 50 laps mm -hmm. at legacy phoenix at least with this setup uh for the tires to fall off the cliff like real bad so i was like if i can just hold out there we'll be okay worst comes to worst i'll have fresher tires or if there's a caution a, not in that window which was what ended up happening if i remember correctly um i took less fuel than everybody else on the last fuel run so that bumped me up a spot it was just patience manage the tires early in the run um and keep keep air because the arrow was not that existent on this setup so <laughs> what arrow so yeah exactly what what what, what extension i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about but man great great race great finish in the end congratulations uh shout out to whoever you like to but uh uh shout outs to my boy aj uh muscleman who couldn't be here because of uh some equipment issues with a move but he'll be back strong next week uh krista and uh the rest of the turn four racing crew and uh yeah and just everybody for having a, a really awesome time here and, and and keeping this uh community building and this series building yeah, it's man. Uh, great to be a part of absolutely mm -hmm. well you did a fantastic job tonight man congratulations appreciate it chris thank you absolutely yes sir second place finish for uh, Nicholas there, and let's uh, go get our third place finisher, and he might be the the disappointing one actually of the group here, and let's see if he actually is. But it's gonna be Gavin Sanders here, finishing in the uh, third position tonight. Uh, Gavin, man, so close. I know, I know you got that win back at Road America in the uh, exhibition, but uh, what was the, did that last caution? Did was that the the straw that that broke that last win from you, or that first one I should say? Uh. Yeah, it was either I said to myself as I was watching it on uh, the last stop when everybody pitted, um, and I didn't. Um, it was either I was going to be 25 deep with tires, or I was going <laughs> to be <laughs> first on old tires. And then, yeah, that caution kind of finished me off. I figured I would have a decent shot, because I seem to have a, a bit of an edge in tire saving mm -hmm. uh, this race, just from being patient and not trying to force the issue in the air, but... It's okay. I've been chasing a win here, so <laughs> a little bit disappointing, but hey, there's more road courses. That's well, probably my better shot. Well, some say the first win is always the toughest, as they say. Uh, I more think it's the next win is the toughest, as they like to say, but uh, <laughs> is there anything as you look at it now you could have done different? I mean, I could have pitted, but it's it's experience, I guess. I, <laughs> I definitely lack experience on the ovals, so um, yeah. It's tough, but 
Good points. Good points for Team Vor. Uh, looking forward to uh, looking forward to the next race. Texas Motor Speedway coming up here uh, in two yes. weeks. So, uh, man, congratulations on uh, the top three. It's a great finish. Good points night. And as you mentioned, Vor ran good tonight. First, third, and eighth in the end. So uh, send shout out to whoever you like to. Uh, big shout out. Uh, well, first off, Team Vor. Um, <laughs> Fat Bastard Burrito, Braden Motorsports, Alpine Stars, Stilo, all the guys. Um, and yeah, just a uh, big shout out to everybody who's watching. Um, thank you for tuning in. Yes. Um, absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to uh, the stream. Absolutely. Appreciate your time there, Gavin. Good job. And uh, we'll see you, uh, see you next race. Thank you. See you next race. You too, buddy. Gavin Sanders there finishing in the third position uh, tonight. So what a fantastic race it was here. Uh, we are off and heading to Pocono now for the uh, Sunset Arctic Games, USRC Grand National Series at uh, Pocono. We'll be uh, going into that session here in just a minute. But uh, at first, we're going to sign off here and uh, go from there. But congratulations to uh, Julian Altina, who gets his first win of the season here in round number four of uh, this season after two rough races on the ovals he gets that win he has been long waiting for this is just the game it's our race see ya and now the wait is over the nerves have taken their toll oh let go Strong. Strong. Ooh. 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 Ooh.